All right, now what I'd like you to do is listen closely. I'm going to ask you some questions, stop and think of the answer, and then I'll call on somebody. So don't just yell out the answer. I want everybody to think of the answer, okay? All right, stop and think, everyone. Who is a U.S. citizen? Take a look at it and wait now. Who is a U.S. citizen? Min, who is a U.S. citizen? Jules and Ellis. Jose and Helen. Good. Jose and Helen are both citizens. Okay, next question. This is like a game show, isn't it? Um, whose height is 5 feet 11 inches? Whose height is 5 feet 11 inches? Wolf? It is uh, Jose. Jose. Good. Good. 5 feet. All right. And third question. What is Jose's occupation? What is Jose's occupation? Helen? Industrial mechanic. Good. What is Helen's date of birth? What is Helen's date of birth? Min? Helen's date of birth. How old is it? 59. 59. Okay. So. Very good. Say it again. Go ahead. Okay. How old is it? 69. Very good. August 5th, 69, 1969. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to make them just, a, you have to think a little bit more for these next ones. Okay. A little bit harder. Listen closely. Who has black eyes and is a U.S. citizen? Okay. Just everybody just look. Who has black eyes and is a U.S. citizen? I know. But I'm not going to call on you. No. You're next. <laughs> okay, Helen, go ahead. And, and what's the answer? Helen. Helen is. Very good. <laughs> okay. Who has brown eyes and is a U.S. citizen? Wolf? Jose. Jose. Okay. I try to ask a variety of questions that can be answered directly from the information on the grid. As the learners begin to develop more confidence and feel more comfortable with the activity, I ask more challenging questions, uh, questions that require them to think about things that might not be on the grid. For example, they might have to do some math, or they might have to think about what they already know about occupations. All right, a couple more. Now, you really have to stop and think with this one now. You might have to do some mathematics. Look at the chart, please. How many people are over 25 years? Of age. How many people are over 25 years? Two people. Two people are over 25 years. Min says two people. Everybody else agree? Who are they, Min? Wolf and Jules. Wolf and Jose. Jose. Right. Okay. Jose, I'm going to ask this question of you. How many people are younger than you? Ah, two people. Two people. Okay. And the last question? Who has an occupation that has to do with, um, who has an occupation that has to do with fixing things? Um, Helen? Two people. Two people. Um, who? Jose and Juan. All right. Now, I've had a chance to ask each of you different questions, and you had to look at the board to answer. Now, stop and think. Look at the board, look at the chart, and I want you to ask other students a question. For example, um, Wolf might say, Helen, who is taller, uh, Jose or Min? Something like that. Okay. Um, anybody have a question they could a would like to ask? Wolf? Yeah. Uh, Helen, please uh, tell me who is taller, uh, me or uh, Jose? Jose. Okay, good. Anybody else have a question to ask? Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, Helen. Who, uh, 
Who is more young? Who is more? More young. Who is younger? Who is the younger? Mm -hmm. um, oh, who is the youngest? Younger. Of all of them, who is the youngest? Yeah. Good, Good question. question. Um, who is he younger? <laughs> mm -hmm. Helen, do you understand the question? Youngest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The min. I'd like to do a little review now. Let's look back here. Is there anything that um, any of you noticed uh, that you learned new this time today? Did you learn anything new? Um, so, yes. Yes, Helen? Yes, uh, we learned uh, about feet and inches. Feet and inches, that's right. Um, different from centimeters and this one mark for feet mm -hmm. and two for inches. Anything else, any new words that you heard tonight? Occupation. Occupation. Mm -hmm. And we learned that, that was a job or work that people do. Yes. Jose, is there anything? Uh, uh, citizen. Citizen, that's right. And oh, one other thing that I noticed, you maybe all knew that before, but uh, is the difference over here with the month and the day. that We do it yeah. here different from in your country. Okay. The, uh, February 8th, not August 2nd. Mm -hmm. Now I'd like to do some writing using the information from the grid up here. Um, I would like you to uh, think of a sentence. For example, when I look at this chart up here, I can think uh, if I look at Min and eye color, I see Min's name and black, I might say a sentence like, Min has black eyes. Okay. Jose, try that same thing now. For example, look at Helen and U.S. citizen. And can you make a sentence that has Helen and that says something about U.S. citizen? Helen is a American people, American girl. Helen is an American citizen? American. Yeah. Good. Okay. Let me write that up here. Wolf, could you read the sentence, please? Helen is an American citizen. Good. Okay. Now I would like everybody to take your pencil and paper and write this sentence down, please, okay. on your pads. Citizen, mm -hmm. citizen with a C. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Very good. Okay. Now, um, Helen, take a look at the chart, please, and can you think of a sentence that says something about Jose. Anything at all. Jose has uh, brown eyes and uh, he is 30 years old. Very good. A long sentence. Good. Tell me again. Jose. Information grids can give people practice in answering general questions that they will encounter in many different situations. Or they can give people practice in answering questions related to a specific real-life situation, such as filling out a job application form. Both types of information grids help people gain the skills and confidence to enable them to take advantage of the many opportunities in their environment. In the process, they will also be learning about each other, how they are different, and perhaps most important, how they are alike.